Catherine, thank you, first of all, for receiving Forbes Portugal. Um, and I would like to start by asking, um, you joined the team, the Web Summit team, recently. Um, was it difficult to, to get this, this train that was in a high speed already? <laughs> yes and no. I think there was a lot to learn, and I certainly had to try to absorb as many things as quickly as possible, and I'm still learning uh, aspects of... Uh, what we do and how extensive Web Summit is. And also, no, because it's an incredible team. I think the people behind Web Summit, the company, everyone I've met so far have both been incredibly good at what they do and incredibly kind and generous. And that goes to the attendees and the partners as well, as people have been very welcoming and, and helped me get on board faster. Mm -hmm. And once you were on board, what were the main goals for this edition? Yeah. Although. Uh, the the machine was already underway. Uh, underway. <laughs> but uh, what were the goals that you intended to? I think you know, manage. coming into the organization after a moment of transition, the goal was having the best web summit event possible and ensuring that our attendees felt like they were going to have a fantastic time, making sure that people knew that they were going to have the same sort of high value experience, that they would get a lot out of being at the event. Uh, the same is true for our partners and. Um, yeah. I feel very confident now a day, almost a full day in, that we've achieved that. I think that the attendance has been incredible, the speakers have been incredible, the energy on the floor is very high. Mm -hmm. As you said, the weather is, is really great too, so feeling very good about the direction. But were there are some points that you needed to change to, to, to make it the Catherine Web Summit? <laughs> oh, um, I think the, the biggest thing that I was able to do or the sort of in my role was to come in and refocus the conversation about mm -hmm. um, about Web Summit away from uh, what had happened previously in terms of our former CEO's conversation or comments on the conflict uh, in Israel, uh, sorry, with Israel and Hamas, mm -hmm. uh, and instead really reorient the conversation to the thing that we're excellent at, which is focusing on technology, its impact on society, uh, what we want the future to actually look like, connecting people who are capable of building that future. Mm -hmm. But you, at this point, you feel that uh, you were capable of um, making that refocus because we, we had big companies that uh, decided to left uh, this edition. Was the message uh, straight to the to the attendees and all the community around uh, Web Summit? I do think so, yeah. I, in both in the sense that uh, we had, the, the participation has been incredible this year. And so certainly we've seen the same enthusiasm. People were not deterred and, uh, from coming. I also think that when I both sent my letter to all of the attendees and partners about clarifying that this was really about returning our focus to what we're excellent at, which is hosting the conversations rather than being at the center of them. We got really good feedback on that. And then yesterday in opening night, I addressed this directly. I spoke about the importance of being able to have robust debate and challenge one another while also being respectful. And that Web Summit's role is really to be the host of that conversation. And uh, that that was well received by um, the audience. I think there was actually some applause, uh, which was unexpected, which was really lovely. But then I've heard the same thing walking around the floor. People mm -hmm. felt like it landed really well. Yes. In that letter, um, you said that uh, Web Summit was entering his next phase. What phase is that? Oh, I'm a new CEO. Uh, <laughs> I think any any company or any organization that goes from uh, through a transition from its founder uh, leading the organization to a new CEO or uh, leading the organization, there's always a bit of transition there. Um, it is becomes a moment when the vision of the company or the mission of the company is about all of the people in it. Um, because everyone has the opportunity to step up and help define that vision. Uh, very often a founder has so much clarity about what they want. Uh, and so I think that this is a, a really exciting moment for everyone involved in Web Summit to help shape that vision for the future. Mm -hmm. And what will be the, um, the themes, the, the, the areas that will um, make the, the change here in this edition? What will be the main 
uh, themes in this edition. Well, I think everyone everywhere is talking about AI, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what's interesting is AI to what end? There's conversations about the AI and the future of online retail. There's conversations about AI and the future of uh, how we address climate change. There are conversations about AI and the future of um, wearable devices. There are conversations about AI and the future of language. And I was just having a conversation about what that means for us as speakers of different languages which is how that may shape our future thinking, our future expression. Um, then, of course, there's AI and regulation. It goes on and on mm -hmm, and on. Mm -hmm. um, I think that in some ways we talk about how every aspect of society is now an aspect of technology. I think that the conversation on the stages today really demonstrates that any conversation about technology is also a conversation about AI. Mm -hmm. At this point, we are only at the second day of uh, of the event. But uh, how how can we measure the success of the 2023 Web Summit? Well, we're really excited that in just in terms of attendees, we're on on track to have. We actually have more attendees here today uh, than we did at the same time last year, which is an incredible indicator. Uh, we um, you know oversubscribed our number of investors. We were expecting 800. We've had more than 900 show up. We've had record numbers of startups, more than 2,600, a third of which have been founded by women. Uh, we were on track to have at least 70,000 attendees uh, on on site over the course of these days. Um, so I think you know in every indication there. But I would also say for me, the most important thing is how people feel mm -hmm. when they leave Web Summit. Do they feel like they had a fantastic time? Do they feel as though their goals were met? Do they feel as though they've made new connections that are going to inspire them as they go forward? Do they feel like they have an understanding of their purpose and, and clarity of their work in the world? Mm -hmm. uh, besides all that feelings, <laughs> but at the end of the day, the, the numbers, um, the, the, the numbers are great though. Yes, the yeah. Excel that we have to, to look at. Uh, is there any expectation about the, the financial return? Is there any figure that you can disclose at this no, point? No, not at this point. Thank you. Okay. Um, we, will, we live in a, in a world where, where technology uh, is in the command, if you can say so. Uh, we have all the new innovations about EA, we have uh, Chat uh, GPT. Um, but at the end of the day, or in the future, where will the, where will the, the human component uh, be? This is something that I care very deeply about. In fact, I, I wrote an article about this in 2019 about how important it is to keep humans in decision making loops with AI. Um, I think that the thing that I focus on when we when we have conversations about AI is how can AI enhance who we are rather than um, you know sub supplant who we are. One of the things that inspires me so much about about people in general is that we are incredibly curious and we are incredibly creative. And I don't think that AI can ever substitute for our curiosity. We can use AI to satiate our curiosity. Um, AI won't substitute for our creativity. It can be a tool for our creativity. And so those are the places where I feel as though we have tremendous opportunity to merge this incredibly powerful technology with our deep humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, about the future, because uh... We have now uh, some, some uncertainty about the political future of Portugal. Uh, you, you are here about, about two weeks, I, I, mm -hmm. I believe. <laughs> How can we guarantee that uh, uh, Web Summit will still uh, come back to Lisbon? Uh, although it's, there is some uncertainty, but what can, we say, what can you say about well, that? Web Summit has a 10-year contract with, the, with Lisbon. Uh, we have a... Uh, that's in place until 2028, but I would say that Lisbon is our home. We have our offices here. We have Web Summit has grown to what it is in Lisbon, and you know I think it's very much our hope to continue to come back for some time to come. Mm -hmm. Being a woman, uh, was it difficult? Did you just felt some suspicious because of uh, uh, assuming the the leadership of this event, and uh, if um, gender equality is uh, or diversity? is a, a theme in Web Summit. 
Gender diversity in gender parity is incredibly important to us. Uh, we actually, I mentioned earlier, a third of the startups that are here are founded by women. Uh, we have a women in tech track, uh, which is out on the floor. The In 2021, more than 50% of our attendees are women, and we're on track for similar uh, numbers this year in terms of gender parity. Gender parity in gender representation is deeply, deeply important to me. As a woman myself, I feel as though um, I feel as though it's a responsibility to be able to demonstrate what it feels like to, to be a woman leader, to think about how I can extend a hand to other women who are up and coming uh, in their leadership journey. And I'm excited to be able to use this position to do that. Okay. Thank you for receiving again uh, from you. Portugal and hope to, to see you next year. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. It was really a pleasure.